everyone, Josh here with Anime Impact, bringing you guys some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. And today, we finally got the reveal of the new big box set, Abyss Encounters. Gaze into the depths of the abyss, darkness and terror lie in the realms below. So we're going to go over every single card. This is going to be a long video, so if you guys don't want to stick around, I do understand. But um, the beginning, we will go in order from UR to SR. So if you guys do want to just worry about those, you can catch those early. But we will also be talking about the rares and the normals, as I always go into a fully detailed box review. So, without further, further ado, let's jump right into it. So, uh, let's get down here. Alright. Card number one. Slate Warrior. Fiend Flip Effect 1900 Beater which is always nice. Win attribute, 4 star. Flip, this card gains 500 attack in defense. If this card is destroyed by battle, the monster that destroyed it loses 500 attack in defense. This card is amazing. The only thing bad about this card is keeping it alive for the turn that it's set. You keep it alive beyond that, this card is phenomenal. I mean, you're looking at a 2,400 beater after it's flipped. 2,400 attack. That's amazing. But again, if you wanted to have those do uh, those you know crazy 2K plus stats without any other you know field spells or anything like that, you're gonna have to set it first, and you're gonna have to keep it alive. So that's the only thing, the only downfall to its effect. But otherwise, it's still a strong 1,900 beater. And when it's destroyed by battle, that monster. Uh, loses 500 attack and defense, which is also just an added bonus. This card is really, 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 really good. I like this card indeed. And the fact that it's a fiend, well, that just adds to it. And it's a fiend that's not a dark attribute or a light attribute, so you can do some other shenanigans with it since it is a wind. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> next card. Salvage. Spell card. Another UR. Target two water monsters with 1,500 or less attack in your graveyard. Add those targets to your hand. Can you say replenishing Yomi ship? Yeah. That'd be pretty crazy. And that's just one play. That's just a play that just came to me instantly. But you could do many, many, many other plays as well. Alright. Very good card, by the way, guys. Um, I forgot to give my ratings. Uh, Slate Warrior, 4.5 out of 5. And Salvage, I will give it a flat 4 out of 5. Still a really, really good card. It's going to be... I don't know how many you'll use in a deck. Maybe two tops. But still phenomenal. Abyss Soldier, another 4 star, Aqua Effect, 1800 beater, 1300 defense. Once per turn, you can discard one water monster to the graveyard to target one card on the field, return it to the hand. Now, there's some cool plays that you can do with this. Um, you could send one of your fish, uh, for example, um, to the grave, which would then lower your opponent's monster by 500 attack, and then you could send the other one to their hand. That's pretty cool. And if you think about it, if you have Abyss Soldier and you have Salvage, you got some really cool combos there as well. So that could be pretty cool for board control. And yeah, it's really, really awesome. The only thing that sucks about most of these so far that we've seen, we've only seen one so far, but it's a four star. We need some more good three stars. That way we can make them work with Hammer Shark, which is still one of the better cards for water decks in Duel Links. But again, this is still a really, really good card. I'm going to give this one another 4 out of 5. So far, these URs are actually pretty decent. Ties of the Brethren. The Brethren. Another spell card. Now, this one has a pretty long um, effect, so we're going to go over it here. Pay 2,000 life points, then target one level 4 or lower monster you control. For the rest of the turn after this card resolves... You cannot special summon monsters. Also, special summon two monsters from your deck with the same type, attribute, and level as that monster, but this diff but with different names from each other the and that monster. So you have to have basically three, two different monsters with two different names, and then they both have to have a different name than one on the field. So basically, if best case scenario, you have three monsters now on the field with all different names. Um, you cannot conduct your battle phase this turn, you activate this card. So this card is really built for just a quick swarming of the field. But you cannot attack that turn, but it's a really good way to build a quick wall. Um, you know, kind of build up, you know, a defensive wall there for either stalling or whatever, especially if you have any kind of good uh, back row support or whatever. Just a really, really good card for building up your defenses on your side of the field and giving you a little bit more board control. 
Uh, really, really good card. The 2000 cost is making this card more of a 3.5 for me um, because that is still a hefty cost to pay in a 4000 you know, meta game. So still not a bad card. It will have its uses. It will have some really good combos. Um, and this card does not need to be just in a water deck either. This could work in any deck. Um, but again, those, that 2,000 life points could work in your favor if you're trying to activate certain skills, perhaps, or whatever. But regardless, um, I'm going to give this one a 3.5. All right. Get, uh, we got a Gishki Chain. So we're getting some more Gishki monsters up in here. This is a four-star water attribute, 1,800 beater, 1,000 defense, Sea Serpent Effect. Um, if this card is normal summon, look at the top three cards of your deck. You can reveal one ritual monster or one ritual spell card among them and add it to your hand. And after that, place any remaining cards on the top of your deck in any order. This card here. Now, let me tell you guys something about this card here. This card here, and no lie, this card could technically replace Senju. This card could technically replace... Um, Petite Angel. This card could replace Sonic Bird in a ritual deck, especially Cyber Angels. This is letting you pick up the top three cards of your deck, put them in any order after you grab one of the ritual uh, monsters or spell cards and adding it to your hand. So it not only does it allow you to set up for your next play or your next draw phase, it also gives you those uh, an additional draw card in your hand just like Senju and Sonic and Petit do. And if you build your deck right, he's going to always be able to get his effect off and you benefit from it every single time. And he's an 1800 beater. So he's now 400 attacks stronger than a Senju or a Sonic. So this guy is amazing. This Sea Serpent is amazing in that particular deck. And you guys already know how Cyber Angels are already cancerous as they are. And this card can make them even more crazy. The, the combos there are definitely, you know, pretty, pretty high up. I'm going to give this guy a 4.5, the highest rating so far, just because of the current state of the meta. This card could make Cyber Angels more cancerous than they already are. Now, what you're probably thinking, though, the only letdown with this card is is the fact it cannot be used with absolute ritual from the grave. Yes, that is its only downfall, but the plus side is you get to set up for future draw phases, knowing what you're going to draw into, and you get in a 400 stronger attack monster. So I think the differences there are more than overwhelming. So, wow. Pretty cool. I would love to see what you guys can take it, uh, do with this card and other ritual decks. Now, that's just Cybers. That's not saying this guy can't be in other ritual decks as well. He could be very, very good. So, we'll see. But I'm going to give him a 4.5 because of his versatility and what he could do for some of the current top meta right now, including Cyber Angels. I think he could be really, really cool. A really good tech, and you might not even have to run uh, more than one or two of these, and you can still run your Senju if you want. I mean, it really doesn't matter, but wow. Really, really cool card. All right, Mystic Piper, one star, light attribute, spellcaster effect, attack zero, defense zero. You contribute this card to draw and reveal one card. If that card is a level one monster, draw one more card. The effect of the Mystic Piper can only be activated once per turn. You could run Mystic Piper in an all Karibo deck. You could run a Karibo Last Gamble Tilt deck. You could do it. It'd be pretty cool. Other than that, I'm not. I can't really think of too many plays off the top of my head. That this guy would work really well with. But yeah, there's that. Um. I think this is one of those cards that's more future-proof because I think this is going to be built maybe for in the future when we get better one-star monsters that could really take advantage of this card. Um, but other than that, I'm only going to give this one really a 3, maybe a 2.5. This one just doesn't seem amazing right off the bat. But then again, there might be some plays that I'm missing that I can't think about at the moment. But I don't want to sit there and linger on it too long because we have a lot of cards to get through. But anyways, I'm probably going to give this one more or less a 2.5 out of 3. This is probably the worst you are so far of the bunch, in my opinion, of what it could really do right now. The splash it can make in the current meta. Alright, so we got we got Evigiski, uh, Levianima. So this one is an Aqua Ritual Effect. Now this is interesting because there was that... that um, monster that we just talked about you know a couple ago 
that was, like I said, could work in a Cyber Angel Ritual deck. But now we got a new Ritual monster here, a Water Attribute, Aqua. And that monster was a uh, Sea Serpent. This one's 2,700 attack, uh, 1,500 defense. You can Ritual Summon this card with any Gishki Ritual Spell card. When this card declares an attack, draw one card. That is boom! That is big. And if you do, reveal it. Then if it was a Gishki monster, look at it. One random card in your opponent's hand. That's even more huge. Not only could you run this guy with the, with the Sea Serpent. I mean, we're talking Gishkis could be a, a, a another big ritual deck right now in Duel Links. This guy is amazing. This guy is fantastic. This guy could be more devastating than Saphira with that effect. Because... Every time he attacks, you draw a card. It's not a one-time thing when he's summoned. It's every single time. And if you draw it and it's a Gishki monster, a Gishki monster, you get to freaking look at one random card in your opponent's hand. So now you know what your opponent's planning. That is huge. So that card that we just talked about a little bit ago just became even better Possibly with this ritual deck. And we're not even out of the URs yet in this box set, guys. Whoo! That card seems legit. Five out of five. That that is a very, very good effect. That could really tilt the meta right now. That could really be I mean, that's a possible meta deck right there. And that's before we even get into any of the other stuff. There might be some more juicy stuff to make Gishkis even better. Let's keep going. Alright. Archfiend Emperor, the first Lord of Horror. Fiend effect. 3,000 attack, 2,000 defense, over 2 tributes worth of a level. Dark attribute. You can normal summon this card without tributing, but its original attack and defense become halved. So it would be 1,500 and 1,000. If summoned this way, it is destroyed during the end phase. You cannot special summon any monsters except fiend type monsters. Once per turn, you can banish one arc fiend card from your hand or graveyard, then target one card on the field, destroy that target. Now, why is this card really, 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 really good? Just because you can summon him for no reason at 1500 attack, 1000 defense, no one's going to get destroyed in the end phase. However, when he's on the field, you can potentially nuke your opponent. So that is amazing. And you could do that once per turn. If you could somehow um, keep this guy alive for an additional turn, you could do it again next turn. Um, if you summon this guy by double tributing, you could do that. Now, this card does not say it cannot be special summoned. So you can technically special summon this card from your grave or from the banish zone using other shenanigans so this card could be potentially really really good in a fiend deck don't let that double tribute deceive you there are ways to get this guy on the field and keep him on the field without having to actually double summon him or double trip you know double tribute for him so there's definitely ways to get around i'm gonna give this one another four out of five really really good card and the fact that you can put him on the field quickly and then just nuke the field just nuke one card on the field just because you feel like it and building fiends up in your grave doing so, which then feeds Necrofear. Yeah, very good card. This could also be a really good combo card to run in Dark World. So if you guys are a pay to win and you got your you whaled out and you got all the Dark World cards, this could be a really good tech in or two for you. Let's keep going. Now a lot, a lot of you in the Discord have been really talking about this card. You guys have been waiting for this card, and it's the Legendary Fisherman 2. 5 star, water attribute, warrior effect. This card's name becomes the legendary fisherman while on the field or in the graveyard. While Umi is on the field, this card is unaffected by other monster effects. If this face of card is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of the opponent's card effect, while its owner controls it, you can add one level 7 water monster from your deck to your hand. So this is a really quick way to grab a sh very strong water attribute monster and add it to your hand. Very good, very, very, very good card. I'm going to give this card a 4 out of 5 as well. Very solid card. Alright. Water Dragon Cluster. A whole boatload of levels. <laughs> Water Attribute. Sea Serpent Effect. Cannot be normal summoned or set. 
has 2800 attack and 2600 defense, must be special summoned with the effect of a bonding spell or trap card. If this card is special summoned, you can activate this effect. Effect monsters your opponent currently control cannot activate their effects for the rest of this turn. Also change their attack to zero until the end of this turn. Quick effect. You contribute this card, special summon two water dragon from your hand in our deck in defense position, ignoring their summoning conditions. So this is a water dragon support card, and he's also a pretty beastly uh, monster in his own right, because if you can actually get this guy on the field and make your opponent's monsters have zero attack, there's a possible OTK deck in the making with water dragon cluster. Now, how situational is it going to be? How good will it be in the current meta? Will you have the time to set up for the plays? That will kind of rely on the other cards that we're going to go over, and hopefully in this box set, you know, giving us a more of a clue by the end of it of how well this deck will really structure and function. So, since I don't really know the future of all the other cards, and I didn't look at this, uh, you know, before I did the review, because I'd like to do all this raw for you guys, my raw review. With all that said, taking into account, i am giving this card a 3.5 out of 5. Because, yes, it could be a good card. It could be, but it is going to be situational. And there are things to worry about, like floodgates and other things that could really just make all of this not worth it. So we will see. We will see how the support lines up and how the decks stack up. So I'm going to give it a 3.5 in that regard. It does have a really kick-ass effect, though, if you do get the plays off. All right, here we go. Next one. Skull Archfiend of Lightning. I just like the card art on this one. It's really, really, really cool. Fiend effect, 2,500 attack, 1,200 defense. Uh, single tribute, dark attribute. During each of your standby phases, you must pay 500 life points. That is not optional, or this card is destroyed. Before, resol oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Before resolving an opponent's card effect that targets this card, roll a six-sided die. Negate the effect if you roll one, three, or six. If you do, destroy that card. So if you roll a 1, 3, or 6, which is a 50% chance because there's 6 sides to a die and, you're gonna roll, and you need to roll 1, 3, or 6, that's what you're going to have to do. Sorry about that, guys. Kids were screaming. Anyway, so... Eh, eh, not really liking it, to be honest. Because he's going to cost you 500 life points each turn. That he's on the field, or you have to let him get destroyed. And, I mean, really, that's, ugh. I mean, the effect of him not being able to be targeted, um, if you roll 1, 3, or 6 with a card, is great. But, I mean, that, ugh, I don't know. I don't know, because there is a good chance that he could get through uh, a massive morph, potentially. There's a chance that he can get through an Econ... There's a chance he can get through, um, you know, some some other card effects that target that could stall you out or stop you from, you know, progressing with an attack. So, I mean, he does have that value, but I just don't seem that it's worth it. I don't really like this card all that much with the whole life point damage to keep him alive and him being not much better than just a regular, um, I don't know. Like, I, ugh, just not, not really, not really feeling it. You know what I mean? I'm just not filling this card. Two, 2.5 for me. He is still a 2,500 beater, nonetheless, in a single tribute. And, and the fact he's a fiend and a dark attribute, he'll work well in that deck as well. It's just his effect is only going to go, is going to work on average 50% of the time. You know, and you got to pay life points to keep him on the field. I just think there's better options for this card in the game right now. But that's just my opinion, of course. We got Warrior of Atlantis, a 1900 beater aqua. Woo! <laughs> um, water attribute, 1200 defense. Um, you can discard this card to the graveyard, add one legendary ocean from your deck to your hand. This card could be sneaky, sneaky good. Sneaky good. And let me tell you why. This card now opens up possibilities. Again, for Daedalus and Neo Daedalus to make their trolley asses become meta yet again. This card is great. It's a 1900 beater on its own, which could be over 2k plus with the right field spell. And 
you could tent you could just bring a legendary ocean right into your hand and now you got a legendary ocean and a lot of other tilty cards in your hand if you're running some draw power for water monsters as well wow you're talking some neo daedalus daedalus tilt coming back to play in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, possibly. Otherwise, it's just a really good card to bring out a Legendary Ocean that allows you to run a non-field spell skill um, with a character, which opens up the doors for using Balance or Restart or some other kind of skill that you normally wouldn't run with a water deck because this guy is doing the searching for you to get your own field spell that you can play while still being able to use another skill. This card is really, really good. Four out of five for me. Really good base attack stat, and his effect could also be really, really good and allow for a lot of other deck builds to come to play for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links because being able to grab a field spell is pretty huge in this game, especially since you don't have to run a field spell skill now because you can run other skills like Restart, Balance, Duel Standby, so on and so forth. Really, really good card. Mysterious Triangle. Quick play spell. Destroy one monster on the field with an A counter. Then you can special summon one level 4 alien monster from your deck. Destroy it during the end phase. Now, this is going to be really, really good if you're putting A counters on monsters. And, of course, if you're running an alien deck. There isn't really too much else to say about it. The card does what it needs to do. It's really, really good. Being able to destroy a monster on the field with that counter is pretty awesome. Because it says with an A counter. Not bad. Really, really good card. Another 4 out of 5 for me. Now, Power Breaker. 1900 attack, 0 defense, 4 star, earth attribute, warrior effect. Now, this is a pretty pretty strong warrior monster to add to our already list of strong warrior monsters. But the question is, can it make warriors better? If this card is in your possession, is destroyed by your opponent's attack or card effect and sent to the graveyard, target one face-up spell Trap card, your opponent controls, destroy that target. If this card attacks, if it changed to defense position at the end of the damage step. Uh, terrible. This is similar to the dragon that we had that gave us 1900 attacks, uh, zero defense. And when he attacked, he got forced into defense. And nobody liked that card. And I think the same is probably going to stand true for Power Breaker. A lot of the meta right now doesn't really have too many face-up spell or trap cards. Unless you're running against like a burn deck. Um, you know, running you know, Temple of the Mind's Eye or something, or um, maybe a field spell skill that you're playing against. Like, really, besides that, most of the current meta right now are all face downs, you know, just waiting to hit you. So, uh, don't really think this guy is going to be too great right now. He is going to be a 1900 beater after all and be over 2000 with, you know, a field spell. But, yeah. With that zero defense, and after he attacks and getting forced into defense, that's not good. Especially when there's Glad Beast looming by, and yeah, that's just that's Glad Beast deck decks would just be licking their lips playing against a power breaker. So now nah, I'm gonna give this one a three, three point five tops out of five. He's still a good beater, but you know he's a beater that has a bad after effect. So now we have an an equipped spell. Which is another thing that really isn't being used much in Duel Links is our equip spells. You don't really see those being used all that much in Duel Links at all. Not since the beginning of the game when dinos were meta with, um, you know, they were using Axe. You know, you don't see that anymore. But anyways, Axe of Fools. <laughs> Axe of Fool. Uh, the equipped monster gains 100 attack, but its effects are negated during each of your standby phases. And inflict 500 damage to the controller of the equipped monster. Now, that has some value, but also has a downside. There are monsters in this game that you can summon without doing certain tributions or, or doing the requirements or whatever, and they're really strong. However, they usually get destroyed in the end phase. We even talked about one of those earlier, Fiend. But you equip it with Axe of Fools, his effects will now be negated and he won't be destroyed or anything like that or, you know, whatever. Like maybe even a Gandor, for example. You can put a Gandor on the field, blow him up, blow up the field, you know, power him up, and then stick an Axe of Fools on him. And then all you got to do is pay the tool of 500 damage to the controller. Um, so, I mean, it's gonna, it, it may have use, but not very much. 
three out of five, three point five maybe. Okay, we have another ritual Giski monster. This one is Mind August. All right, six star attribute or water. Yeah, six star attribute, six star water attribute. Aqua Ritual Effect, 2,500 attack, 2,000 defense. You can Ritual Summon this card with any Gishki Ritual Spell card. When this card is Ritual Summoned, target up to five cards in any graveyard. Shuffle those targets to the deck. This is huge! Woo! Because now you decking out is probably very un improbable. Very improbable with this card. Very. Now, this, of course, this effect only works when it's first summoned by a Ritual Summon. But still, this guy, late game, could be really, really clutch. Because now you're going to be able to restock your deck. And that's huge. Another good Giski Ritual Monster. This one is not as good as the other one. This one is definitely a solid 3.5 for me. 3.5. If it could use its effect... More than once, possibly a four. But then again, targeting up the five cards in your graveyard and shuffling those targets to the deck is pretty big. So, therefore, it is a 3.5. Almost a four, but I feel a 3.5 is fair. Still really, really good. Even has pretty decent stats. 2,500 attack and 2k defense. Alright. Giski Aqua Mirror. Now, this, I believe, is a field spell. This card can be used to ritual summon... I'm sorry... <sighs> I said field spell. This is a ritual spell card. <laughs> Where did I get field spell from? Oh my goodness, guys. It's getting late. It's like 2.19 a.m. This card can be used to ritual summon any Giski ritual monster. You must also tribute monsters from your field or your hand whose total levels equal the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon. So it has to be exact. Um, you can shuffle this card from your graveyard into the deck to target one Giski ritual monster in your graveyard. Return it to... Ah, uh, return that target to the hand. So this deck... It's just built around recycling and reusing, recycling and reusing. Like another deck that's similar right now that's currently cancer to Duel Links, Cyber Angels. So this could give Cyber Angels a run for their money in terms of who is the true best ritual deck. Because right now, Dakini, Cyber Angels have to rely now on Sephira, which is kind of not in the same archetype. So... Gitski could be its own thing without anything else in it. So, I mean, hey. You think Gitski Ritzwills might be getting the Cyber Angel treatment very, very soon? Like an emergency nerf? I don't know. <laughs> but we'll find out. Um, very, very good card there. Very good. Four out of five. No, no diffs about it, man. Arch Fiend Calvary. Four star. 1900 meter Fiend. Fiends are getting a little bit of love in this box set. Another dark attribute as well. Alright, so this one, if this card on the field is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target one Archfiend monster in your graveyard, except Archfiend Calvary special summon that target. It cannot attack this turn. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so what's really good about this? What's really good about this is you could do some plays with Trance Arts Fiend. And what I mean by that, I mean, this is just one example. There's probably a million. I just don't want to sit there and think about too much because, you know, we, get, we need to get through these cards. But Trance Arts Fiend, for example, you can put this guy, back, Trance Arts Fiend, back on the field. He gets destroyed again by battle or whatever. And you can grab one of your banished monsters that you've already used with a Necrofear. Now, this is just one example, like I said, which... Could then allow you to recycle whatever. You know, more Karibos back in your hand. Other cards that you may have banished for Necrofear back in your hand. Whatever. So there's a cool little play there. And the fact that this guy does not have that terrible after effect of when he attacks, he gets thrown into defense. He does not have that bad after effect. And that is why this card is a good, solid 3.5 as well. Very good 1900 beater for a Fiend deck. You could also now start running the... Um, Arts Fiend, you can start running the uh, Arts Fiend Palabrinth. There we go. I couldn't get it out. The Field Spell now, because now you can technically start running a Beatdown Fiend deck with all these big 18, 1900 beater fiends. So, hey, fiends might not actually, fiends might not even need Necrofear as much anymore. Fiends might be able to be strong on their own now 
as individual monsters. So we'll see where it goes, but still a really good 3.5 on that one. Still a 1900 beater at the end of the day. Not a bad effect. Then again, it is situation because of it having to be destroyed by a card effect, but nonetheless, there are combos at play here that you could do. Fiends like to do a lot of shenanigans, and this would just fit right in. All right, Citadel Whale. Water attribute. If, oh, it's a fish as well. 2350 attack, 2150 defense. If this card is in your hand or graveyard, you contribute two water monsters, special summon uh, this card. You can only use the effect of Citadel Whale once per turn. If this card is special summoned, you can set one C stealth, sorry, C stealth attack directly from your deck once per turn. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets one water monster you control and no other cards, quick effect, you can negate the activation if you do destroy that card. So this card has a mouthful of stuff that it does here. Wow. So if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you contribute two water monsters, special summon this card. You can only use this effect of Citadel Whale once per turn. Hmm. So this card has some value of being able to get a somewhat of a two, uh, 2300 beater on the field. And if you special summon him that way by uh, attributing the two off the field, you also can grab a Citadel Whale I'm sorry, a C Stealth Attack, and put that on your side of the field as well from your deck. So it also has a little bit of deck fitting factors there, and it shuts down try, it shuts down cards that want to target your monsters as well. Very, very good monster, and if you do that, and you have another monster in your hand, you can still summon that same turn because this guy is being summoned via a special summon. So you have two options. You can either just tribute those two monsters normally to summon this guy, which there would be no point doing that, or you can just special summon him with two tributes, which would basically be the same thing, except you're going to get his effect off and allow another summon to occur in your turn. So, wow. It's a mouthful. It's a lot to digest and take in. Um, wow. <laughs> so I'm going to see a, I'm going to give it a strong, strong 3.5. It will see some play, I think, a little bit. Not much, because again, Re removing two resources on the field for board control to bring out this big guy. <sighs> I don't know. It would really depend on the situation, the kind of deck you're building, and what the kind of state of the meta is right now. Because again, guys, like I said, those floodgates hitting things like this, or you getting a quick mass morph on this thing, I don't know. It could be risky because you are literally giving up two resources that are already established on the field. They can no longer be floodgated to only bring this guy out and he gets floodgated. And now all that work that you just did was a waste. So, I mean, the tribute meta right now isn't really strong. Right? Unless it's hazy. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know about this card yet. I don't really see where it's going to fit right now. It does have a good effect, but its stats aren't really that great for a monster of its caliber uh, in terms of levels and tributions that it requires. But we'll see. Like I said, I'm going to give it a 3.5. It still is a good card. It's just I don't know how well it's going to be used. Now, again, if Legendary Ocean becomes a big thing, you know, do keep in mind... That, that does lower the level of all monsters, but even then, I don't think that's going to really help Citadel well, because his effect only gets off if you tribute two water monsters anyway, so I don't know. Anyways, going to the next one. Now, this is Sea Stealth Attack. This is the card that he actually brings out and sets on your side of the field, and this is a continuous trap. When this card is activated, you can activate one Umi from your hand or graveyard. While Umi is on the field, this face-up card gains these effects. So, whew, so this could technically make Mako good again, because Mako does start with the Umi Field spell, or you can run, like I said, a Legendary Ocean deck using Restart, Balance, Dual Standby, etc., etc. Basically, once per turn, you can banish one Water Monster you control until the end phase. This card, <clears throat> this turn, face up spell and trap you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, even if this card leaves the field. At the start of the damage step, if you um, if your water monsters whose uh, original level is five or higher battles an opponent's monster, destroy that opponent's monster. So this works well 
with this because if you fight with Citadel Whale, it will automatically destroy the monster that it battles thanks to Sea Stealth's attack. So with that combo said, I'm still I'm still sticking with my 3.5 rating for this guy, but it definitely helps him out a lot that he brings this to the field uh, when he uses his effect. So I mean, those two do work very well together, but regardless, Sea Stealth attack with only three zones, ah, the three zones are just killing it for a lot of the current decks of what you could really do with this card because this this card can't even showcase its full potential because we only have three zones and this is going to take up one of them that's the bad thing because this card basically says no you cannot destroy my back row that's face up because no i'm not letting it happen and you could do equipped spell cards you could do a lot of crazy things you could do continuous spell cards whatever some really good shenanigans like balloons for example like that would be crazy Balloons with Sea Stealth Attack. There you guys go. You're welcome. You heard it here first. Anime Impact. Alright. Duotarian. We got some dinos, baby. Woo! <laughs> Alright, so this is a 2,000 attack. Four star. I'm sorry. Five star. Water attribute. Defense 1,400. Of course, it's a dinosaur. Dinosaur. <laughs> dinosaur effect. You can discard this card, add one bonding spell trap from your deck to your hand. So you don't even got to summon this guy. This guy's there for deck thinning and winning. Um, if this card is normal special summon, you can target one Hydrogeddon, Oxygeddon, or Duotarian in your graveyard. Special summon it. You can only use each effect of Duotarian once per turn. Now, why is Duotarian a, a very good card right now, you say? Because he is the first single tribute dino that actually has some value in Duel Links. Hera would be a close second. Hera with the Terra plays are really, really good. But when it comes to actually having a single tribute dino that has a multi-purpose in a deck to help you win, this card does that. Because you don't even have to summon this guy to make him useful. Hera has to be summoned. Otherwise, he's just sitting in your hand doing nothing. This guy, you can just tribute him from your... You could discard him from your hand. Grab a bonding card. And boom, there you go. Now you can start building up for your water dragon place. Or you could just use this guy as a single tribute Tekken. Uh, as well, in case your monster gets a flood, you let one of your monster gets floodgated or whatever. Because right now, dinos have a problem with d you lock down their board; they're they're done because they don't run tributes. This guy could make that deck a little bit better because he could bring out Oxygen from the graveyard. He can bring out a Hydrogen from the graveyard. He can uh, discard himself and give you a bonding H two O or a bonding um, uh, was it bonding spell or trap, right? Yeah, you can grab a bonding spell or trap. So, I mean, this guy's got deck thinning. This guy's got swarm value. He does a little bit of everything. He's a really, really good card. Um, his stats are pretty low for a single tribute, but uh, the, his effects make up for that. So, therefore, depending on what kind of deck you build, you can actually make a water dragon deck now around this guy. I'm going to go ahead and give him a solid 3.5 as well. It would be 4 if he had better stats. But he's getting a solid 3.5. Alright, Call of the Arts Fiend. Whew! Starting to run out of energy, you guys. Whew, this is long. This is a continuous trap card. You can target one level 5 or higher fiend type monster in your graveyard. Discard one fiend type monster, and if you do special summon the targeted monster, you can only use this effect, Call of the Arts Fiend, once per turn. <laughs> yeah, okay, so guys, we got some swarm value here with fiends. You can target one level 5 or higher fiend type monster in your graveyard. Discard one fiend type monster and if you do, special summon the targeted monster. This is huge. Because if you summon Necrofear the normal way, it dies or gets destroyed or discarded or whatever. Gets into the grave somehow from the field. You can use Call of the Arts Fiend and bring Necrofear back. You can bring Invader of Darkness onto the field. And that's just two examples of uh, really high-level, strong fiends. Not, not including all the other crazy fiends that we're getting now. 
That's not including anything to do with Dark Worlds. That's not including anything other like that, any other tilt that you could really do. This card is clutch. They should call this Call of the Clutch Arch Fiends. That's what they should call it. This card is a 4 out of 5, and let me tell you why. If you're running 2 or 3 of this card, not only are you feeding your graveyard for other fiends, because fiends love to be in the graveyard. A lot of fiends rely on cards being in the graveyard to do effects. Imagine running Call of the Arch Fiend with um, Snipe Hunter, and you're putting high-level monsters into your grave, feeding it for Call of the Arch Fiend. A lot of crazy plays. Fiends are going to be insane. They're going to have so many different crazy options after this box set. You're going to see so many different Fiend decks that aren't going to rely. I mean, think of Fiend Farewell. And you just pop off. A, and you get lucky and you get a big, big Fiend in that grave. Like, whoo! The deck build you can make is amazing. Four, four, definitely a 4 out of 5 for me for sure. 100%. 110%. That card, that card just seems like it's going to be fun. As long as it doesn't get locked down, that card seems like it could be fun. Alright. Arts Fiend Soldier. So we got a normal Fiend now. 1900 beater, 1500 stats, uh, 1500 defense. This is probably one of your best base stat, non tribute, non requirement of anything else Fiend right now in the game. And it is also a dark attribute. So again, beat down Fiends could be a thing. It could be a thing. Alright, let's go. Oh, by the way, since. We're getting into the rares now. I'm not going to give rares ratings to save a few se a few valuable seconds multiple times over. And we're going to go through these extremely quick. If one of these catches my eye, we will stop and talk about it. Otherwise, from here on out, this is the rares. And then we're getting into the normal. So, if you guys are done watching the video, hope you all loved it so much. Hope you uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're new. Join our Discord in the description below. Comment what you guys think about the new box set. And yeah, so... This is the cutoff point. All right, guys. So if you're sticking around, we're going into the rares. And we're going to go through them quick. <clears throat> Shadow Knight Archfiend. More Archfiend monsters. This is a wind, art, uh, wind attribute. Four star. Fiend effect. The controller of this card pays 900 life points during each of his or her standby phase. This is not optional. When this card is targeted by the effect of a card controlled by your opponent. When resolving the effect, Roy really six-sided die. So it's kind of like a, a, a dumbed down. Or a, a, it's a mini version of the uh, the other one that we had, the uh, Skull Arts Fiend. So, I didn't like that one very much. And probably, uh, yeah. 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 All right. Terror King Arts Fiend. So, some more Arts Fiends. And let's see here. It's, it has a similar effect where it's got to, you got to pay life points to keep it alive again. I'm just not a fan of that. I'm just not a fan of those. I, I just want to kind of get through those. Um, Pandemonium. Here's a field spell. <laughs> Neither player has to pay life points during the standby phase for Archfiend monsters. So, Pandemonium kind of makes the other monsters better because now you can get them on the field and not have to pay for their life point cost each turn. But again, it's a field spell that you have to now waste in your deck. you got to take up one of your 20 slots or whatever for this card just to make your other cards not suffer so much. And most of those other cards also take tribute. So, it's like... It's just, it seems like a mess. It just seems like a cluster of a lot of pieces that you have to put into play just to bring out a monster. It just seems like not a great setup or an idea. But again, I will, I will try to play around with those cards and stuff like that. Of course, when I get, as I get them. But I just, eh, not really seeing it. Uh. Now, what's really good cool, though is you can search. Um, you could, you could keep adding monsters to. You your hand from your deck if they are destroyed with this card. So I guess that is a good plus. You know, you get some deck thinning, but again, still, you need a lot of pieces. And it's just, uh I don't really like decks that need so many pieces to just get a simple thing done. Archfiend's Roar. Pay 500 life points and target one Archfiend monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. It cannot be attributed. Destroy it during the end phase of this turn. Hmm. So this one could be, this could be a possible OTK. With Fiends. Archfiend Roar could be a possible OTK setup because you could just grab a real strong one from your grave instantly, use them for that turn, and hopefully go for games. So not a bad card, actually. <laughs> Alien Warrior. Reptile, baby. Reptiles. Four star. Earth attribute. 1800 attack. Uh, when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, place two A counters. Here's where the A counters are coming in. Place two A counters, which I'm assuming mean Alien Counter. On the monster that destroyed it. 
If a monster with an A counter battles an alien monster, it loses 300 attack and defense for each A counter during damage calculation. That is dope! Aliens, reptile deck, oh my god, I'm already seeing the plays. This could be another one of those where it's mostly rare monsters with a few splashed in UR and SR back row. And it's going to be similar to Glad Beast where it's just going to be crazy good. It's going to have so many awesome effects. It's not going to tag in and tag out. But holy shit, putting the A counters on, destroying monsters with A counters, lowering attack and defense because of A counters. A counters being easy to put on monsters when you get destroyed. I mean, damn! Aliens coming in with a vengeance. I really like this card. I really like where this is going with the whole alien thing, man. I'm, I feel like that deck could be fun as F. <laughs> Brainwashing beam. Whew. Sounds like an alien move, which, of course, it is for the alien deck. Um, so this is a continuous trap card. Select one monster with at least one A counter on your opponent's side of the field and take control of that monster. During each of your end phases, remove one A counter from that controlled monster. If all A of uh, if all A counters are removed from that monster or that monster is destroyed, destroy this card. So, wow, the things that you can do with A counters right now, pretty cool. Elemental hero Captain Gold, twenty one hundred. All right, let's read the effect before I get too excited. Four-star, light attribute, warrior effect, 2,100 attack, 800 defense. Attack that looking pretty good, but let's keep reading. You can discard this card to the graveyard. Add one skyscraper from your deck to your hand, which that won't be as useful because that's actually a character skill. So, ugh. If skyscraper is not face-up on the field, destroy this card. So, okay, this card's interesting because if you do run the... Where the heroes dwell, you now have a 2100 beater just to throw on the field. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. So you're going to want to run a lot of cards in your deck that allow you to get a quick activation of that skill, such as Mirror Wall. So, whew. could Could be good. Could be good. All right. Arts Fiend General, 4-star Dark Attribute, 2100 attack, 800 defense. Again, really good attack stat, but let's read. Fiend effect, you can discard this card to the graveyard to add one pandemonium from your deck to your hand. If this card is on the field, but pandemonium is not on the field, destroy it. So if this card is similar to Elemental Hero Captain Gold. They're almost basically the same thing. Except one's for Fiend, one is for Heroes. So, again, same situation in that card, pandem uh, pandemonium, and the whole deck is kind of built around it. I just, I'm not really a fan, but it could set up for a pretty good Fiend beatdown deck, no lie. A cell breeding device. Continuous spell. During each of your standby phases, put one A counter on one face of monster your opponent control. These A counters outrage is going to be crazy. The A counters are going to be meta. I'm telling you guys. Aliens are going to run wild. All we're missing now is some more aliens. That's all we need that can do more A counter shenanigans. I'm about to title this video A counter outrage. Aliens are coming. All right. <laughs> so, depending on how many other monsters we have to support this particular archetype, this is going to be a crazy, crazy fun deck to play. And I want to play it right now. Alien Shock Trooper. Speak of the devil. I said we needed some more aliens. And God damn it, they gave it to us. A 1900 beater, no less. Four star, whoo! Alien Shock Trooper getting it on! Alien Telepath, 1600 attack, 1000 defense, fire attribute, four star, reptile effect. Reptiles are coming out strong, baby! I'm excited! Once per turn, you can remove one A counter from an opponent's monster, destroy one spell or trap card. Oh my god! The A counter outrage! I think this could be the, the hidden jewel of this whole box set. Go into this box set. If you're watching the video at this point, stop what you're doing. Check your credit card. Check your bank balance. See what you got. Whatever you got, throw into this box set when it drops. Just so you guys can have fun with me and hopefully play some alien A-counter tilt. Because this looks like a fun-ass deck. Holy shit. I'm, I'm like getting excited. I'm getting pumped reading these cards. Like I want to play aliens, man.
If a monster with an A counter battles an alien monster, it loses 300 attack of defense for each A counter during the. Oh my god! The A counter tilt! Alien Hypno. 1600 attack, 700 defense, 4 star water attribute, reptile Gemini effect. We're going to skip that first part of that effect because we already know how Geminis work. During your main phase, you can select one monster your opponent controls with an A counter and take control of it while this card is on the field. During each of your end phases, remove one A counter. So basically, this guy can just take... See, he's like, oh, you got an A counter? You got an A counter? You got an A counter? Well, one of you motherfuckers are coming to my side of the field. You're going to join Team A counter. You're going to join the A team. There we go. Damn. A counters just seem like so much fun right now. Okay, this is another one that requires pandemonium, and it, uh, man, these cards, I'm just, I'm just not feeling these arch fiends. I really don't want to read all these, though, because they're so long. Uh, during each of your standby phase, you must pay 1,000 life points. This is not optional. I mean, like I said, these cards could be really good for a beatdown, a beatdown fiend deck. But my goodness, you better make sure that you set up ways to keep your life points intact and have back row for protection, for sure. All right, more aliens. Oh, I'm excited. Alien Overlord. I like that name, and I like the design. Looks really, really messed up, and that's the way it should be. Reptile Effect. You can remove two A counters from anywhere on the field to special summon this card from your hand. Once per turn, you can place one A counter. <laughs> you remove two and get one back. Oh, my God. Uh, you can place one A counter on each face-up monster your opponent controls. Oh my god, if a monster with an A counter battles an alien, it loses 300 attack and defense for each A counter. Oh my god, you can only control one alien overlord, but oh my god. <laughs> These freaking, this alien deck is going to be so lit. I'm telling you guys right now, if you watch this video, aliens will be meta. This is busted. You're going to get spammed with A counters out the ass. They're going to keep nuking your field, nuking your back row, stealing your monsters. Oh my god. I want to play this deck. Spine Gilman. Sea Serpent Effect. All fish, Sea Serpent, and Aqua Titan monsters you control gain 400 attack. Ooh. Ooh. And that is a three star. It works with Hammer Shark. That is a better version of of Starboy that is a better Starboy because he's gonna be summoned and he's got a good base of 1300 attack with the field spell would boost him up anywhere from 1500 to a possible 1800 depending if you're using Bastion and he's boosting himself another 400 and everyone else on your on the field on your team another 400 Possible OTK Hammer Shark with Spine Gilman. That is a really, really good card. That's a hidden jewel. That could be a possible hidden jewel in that deck. Armed Sea Hunter, four star, eighteen hundred attack. Sea Serpent again, and I got some plays for Sea Serpents, guys. I got some ideas for Sea Serpent decks. Let me tell you what. Uh, water attribute, of course. After damage calculation, if this card battles an effect monster, negate the effect of that monster, including the in ah. Including in the graveyard, you must control another face of water monster to activate and resolve this effect. If this card will be destroyed, you can destroy one face of level 3 or lower water monster you control instead. Ooh, nice. Interesting. Cool, cool, cool. That is, that's dope. So, you can technically destroy a Fire King Yoxio with this, boy, and he ain't gonna get that effect off. That's nice. The Despair Uranus. <laughs> Uranus! The Despair Uranus! Oh my goodness. This is a rock effect. 2900 attack, 2300 defense. Double tribute, it looks like. Um, and a light attribute, of course. When this card is tribute summoned while you control no spell or trap cards, you can activate the effects. Your opponent declares either continuous spell or continuous trap. When you set one card of that type directly from your deck, this card gains 300 attack for each face-up spell or trap card you control. Face-up cards in your spell and trap zone cannot be destroyed by card effects. Wow. Wow. Okay. So an over 3k beater instantly. Wow. Protects your face-up back row. Wow.
Not a bad card for rocks, man. Just getting him just getting him to be tribute summon is gonna be your only task. But you do that, and he's gonna be set, man. He's gonna be set. Ooh, we got some more ritual magic. Gishki. <laughs> uh Ted Troger. I'm, I'm saying Ted Roger. I'm just gonna call him Ted Roger. Ted Roger, whatever. Aqua ritual effect. Water attribute, 2600 attack, 2100 defense. You can ritual summon this card with any Gishki ritual spell card. Once per turn, you can declare one one card type, monster spell or trap. Your opponent can discard one card to negate this effect. This card's effect. Otherwise, both players send one card of the declared type from their main deck to the graveyard. Oh, oh that is busted! Because either way, it's your minus one for your opponent. And the way this deck works, it's not a minus one for you because you can get that card back from your graveyard. So in most situations, this is going to be a minus one to your opponent's hand or to their deck. Oh my god. Get There's so much good cards in this box. There's so much new meta that could come. Like the new the new Ritual Beast Gitskis are going to be great. Gitskis are going to be great. And then my favorites, Aliens. They're going to be even... Oh my god. This box set is actually really good. I'm still pissed off because I can't afford to keep up with these box sets. But... At least talking about these cards got me excited for them, even if I don't get them. They're still exciting for you guys who can, right? Very exciting. Forbidden Arts of the Gishki. The Gishki. I'm going to call them the G-Keys. Or no, I'm going to call them the G... I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call them the real Gs of Duel Links. That's what we're going to call Gishkis from now on. We're going to call them the real Gs of Duel Links. The, the original gangsta, man. All right. This card can be used to ritual summon any Gishki ritual monster... You also um you must also attribute face of monsters from anywhere on the field whose total levels equal from anywhere wait a minute what hold up you must also attribute face of monsters from anywhere on the field whose total levels equal the levels of the ritual monsters you ritual summon have the attack of the monster ritual summoned by this effect you cannot conduct your battle phase to turn you activate this effect but it says anywhere on the field. What? It's like a soul exchange ritual. Oh my. It says anywhere on the field. Does that mean you can take your opponent's monsters too? <laughs> what? Alright, Gishki Beast. The G. No. No, 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 no. The G Beast. That's what we're calling the G. Remember, guys, they're the original G. The OG. The original gangsters. Oh my goodness, it's a beast effect, 4 star water attribute. When this card is normal summoned, you can target 1 level 4 or lower Gishki monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target in face of defense position. Really, really cool. Damage diet. Have all damage you take this turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Have all effect damage you take this turn. That's interesting. Uh, Gishki Avents. 1500 attack, uh, 800 defense, 4 star water attribute, spellcaster. Once per turn, you can choose one Gishki monster from your deck and place it on top of your deck. Whoa. This deck just seems very powerful. Um, Cyclone. Cyclone? I'm going to say Cyclone. Cyclone. I think it's Cyclone. Like Cyclone. Cyclone or something like that, I'm assuming. Um. 2150 attack, 1650 defense. Uh, once per turn, you can declare one monster type and attribute. Look at the one random card in your opponent's hand, and if it is a monster of the declared type and attribute, shuffle it into the deck. Otherwise, return it to the hand. Well, that's that's pretty interesting. That's very because that's a minus one from their hand, and more times than not, a lot of people are running similar decks. And when you start seeing a couple of their monsters early, you might already know exactly what monsters they're going to have in their in their hand. Um, mostly. Sometimes. Alright. We got Fish Borg Planter. Uh, fish Effect. Hold on one second, guys. Alright. Fish Effect. Once while this card is in the graveyard, you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard. Then, if it is a water monster, special summon this card from the graveyard. You can only use the effect of Fishborn Flander once per turn. That's that's pretty cool. Hmm. 
So once per turn, while this card is in the grave, once while this card is in the graveyard, you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard. Hmm, interesting. 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 100 footed horror. <laughs> 2600 attack, 1300 defense, dark attribute, insect. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can normal summon this card without shipping, but its original attack becomes 1300. Uh, no. Mistaken arrest. Quick play. Until the end of your next turn after this card resolves, neither player can add cards from their deck to their hands except by drawing them. That could be pretty good against Cybers and some other decks that have a lot of draw power. It'd be pretty interesting to see how that would play out, but... Mm. A. Cell. Recombination device. Quick play. Target one face of a monster on the field. Send one alien monster from your deck to the graveyard. And if you do, place eight counters on that monster equal to the level of the sent monster. Oh my god. <laughs> During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Add one alien monster from your deck to your hand. Oh my god. Eight counters are going to be so busted, man. I want to play with aliens so bad now. Bonding D2O. Um, we got Desmanian Devil, Beast Effect 1700. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can add one level, uh, four or lower Beast Titan monster from your deck to your hand. That's interesting. Downbeat, tribute one face a monster special summon from your deck. One monster with the same original type and attribute that that tributed monster had on the field, but one uh, level lower. You can only activate one uh, Downbeat per turn. Um, we also have Showdown of the Secret Scent uh, Scroll Techniques. This is a counter trap. While your opponent activates a spell trap card on monster effect with the same name as a card in their graveyard, negate the activation if you do destroy that card. And I accidentally forgot one, guys. I kind of skipped it on accident. Bonding D2L. Should be two um, Duotarian and one Oxygenon in your hand in our field, especially some one Water Dragon or Water Dragon Cluster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. This is treated as a special summon with the effect of bonding H2O. If Water Dragon or Water Dragon Cluster is sent from the field to your graveyard, while this card is in your graveyard, add this card to your hand. You can only use this effect, bonding D2O, once per turn. Interesting. All right. All right, now that we're in the normals, we're not going to go over them. We're just going to quickly glance at them. Um, so this is Pandemonium Watch Bear Beast. Uh, we got Vile Pawn Archfiend Fiend. This is just to save time on the video, guys. Dark Bishop Archfiend. So many freaking Archfiends. Des Rook. Um, Des Rook Archfiend. These are like all chess pieces. Um, <laughs> Infernal Queen Archfiend. We have Checkmate. Uh, Moki Moki. <laughs> Baby! Absolute End. Hmm. Moki Moki King. We have Moki Moki Smackdown. Moki Moki could be fun to play. Just, you know, why not? Alien Gray. Some more aliens. Um, Alien Mars. Wow. So much Alien Skull. Alien Hunter. Some of these aliens could be really, really good. I just don't really have enough time to go over everything that are normal. But I definitely want to go at least through the names and the look at the artwork. Alien Mother. Cosmic Horror, uh, Gangiel, Gangiel, uh, Flying Saucer, Musiki, 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 or something, something like that. Crop Circles, more aliens, <laughs> Orbital Bombardment, wow. Corruption Cell A, place one A counter on one face of monster on your opponent's side of the field. So that's just a simple, just slap it on there. Eight Cell Scatterburst, another quick play. Wow, aliens are going to be so good. We even got a field spell for aliens. Uh -huh. Wow, man. Aliens are going to be so good. Golden Flying Fish. Alien Kid. Mermaid Archer. Mer Mirror Ladybug. Gishki Vanity. G Vanity. Aqua Mirror Meditation. Uh, another Gishki Reliever. Uh, we have Gishki Noelia. Yishki, uh Mollusk, Aquamere Illusion, Damage Vaccine, Max, Infinity Max, or, um, I'm sorry, ah! Damage Vaccine Max, when you take damage by battle or by card effect, gain life points equal to the damage you took. Wow. This could be good in extra, extra. 
Oh! Oh my god. Underworld Egg Clutch. Uh, plasma Ball. This is like a... Um, this card here, guys, is more or less a more free-to-play Golden Apples for you guys, basically. Um, that's really, really cool. Um, except we don't get the token, of course. Fish Rain, Sound the Retreat, Gishki, uh, Photo Mirror, Different Dimension, Deep Sea Trench. When this card resolves, banish one water monster from your hand, graveyard, or face up on the field. Then... When this face-up card on the field is destroyed, special summon that banished monster to your side of the field. You can play this off with some storm plays. Um, Lemuria, the Forgotten City, if, uh, field spell. Interplanetary. <laughs> I'll say that ten times fast. Interplanetary. Purple thorny. Purple thorny. Purple thorny beast. I don't even fucking know. I'm not saying that again. Oh, uh, Terrain Tooth. <laughs> Suchinoko. <laughs> Bonding DHO. Mythical. <laughs> Bestiomorph, I mean. Oops. Oh, my God. Target one one card you control destroy. That could be useful in some decks. And then we're back to Slave Warrior. So, I hope you guys all enjoyed this very long review. Hope you guys all... um. I, I don't, I'm not saying you guys all need to agree with my, my ratings and some of my suggestions, but i definitely like to throw those out there for you guys to give you guys my take. Now, this was all a raw review. I didn't see any of these cards before I did this. I tried to avoid leaks and spoilers this whole time because I like to go into this with a pretty clean slate and an unbiased opinion. So, I hope you guys all enjoy it always. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Join our Discord in the description below. Drop a like on the video and comment below what you guys think. And until next time, have a great morning, great afternoon, great evening. Sorry about all the kids in the background. Until then, peace.